everybody, this is Jackie from Meyer Stitch and Post. And I want to invite you to come and join us on a little journey through some of the basics of quilting. We get asked every day about how to cut, what a quarter, scant quarter inch is, and a bunch of other topics that we're going to cover off in a series of short little videos. And here I want to start off with the very first thing that you're going to do, and that is you're going to go to your favorite quilt shop and you're going to buy large quantities of fabric. And what I see people doing is they think they're folding their sheets and they take their fabric and they fold it in half and they fold it in half and they fold it in half again until they're ready to use it. And then what happens is they have to unfold their fabric to start cutting. I'm going to show you my very first special little trick. And hopefully you have an eight and a half by 24 inch ruler. If you don't have one, I strongly suggest that you go out and buy it. Lay your fabric on the table with your ruler and start wrapping your fabric around the ruler just like this. And when you're done, I'm going to show you one of the benefits of this. One of the many benefits. Slide your ruler out, fold your fabric in half, and now you can take that to your bookshelf or your favorite fabric shelf, lay that on the shelf, and now all of your fabrics that you buy will be folded in this nice compact little package. You can see clearly what it is, and when you're ready, you can remove it from the shelf, bring it to your ironing station or your cutting table, open the fabric up, and just uncurl enough fabric so that you can start working on it. Now isn't that a whole lot easier than the method that I showed you before? This is just trick number one from Jackie and the girls at the Meyer Stitch and Post. Join me for my next video on how to cut properly. Hi everybody, it's Jackie from Meyer Stitch and Post and I'm back once again with my second video with helpful tips on how to get started with your quilting. Our first video we covered off just how to store your fabric. Secondly, we are here today to show you how to cut properly. This is one of those things that just scares me every time I see it. Now I have here an Omni Grip 8.5 by 24 inch ruler. It just happens to be the, the ruler that I like and I like the clear markings on it. And most quilting rulers will have hash marks on their rulers in eighth of an inch increments. So all the little black lines that you see on this ruler are one eighth increments. And then we have larger dash lines for the quarters, halves, three quarters, and then the large solid black lines for your one inch. So you can cut very accurately if you use your ruler. Now, I'd like to get started and show you the very first thing that you have to do when you purchase your fabric from your favorite quilt shop is to make sure that this raw edge is uh, square. Now it may look very square when you take it home, but it generally isn't. Most of us will wash our fabric before we start using it. Now, I am a right-handed cutter, so I will demonstrate cutting the right-handed way. And then we'll come back and we'll quickly do this as a left-handed cutter, because I know some of you may be left-handed. So in order to square this fabric up, because I am right-handed, I need to take this raw edge and put it over here on my right-handed side. So I'm simply going to turn my bolt of fabric around. If you have a mat that is portable, you can just twist your mat. That's the easiest way to do it. Now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm simply going to lay one of my solid lines on my fold line on my fabric. And if you look, you'll see, although it looks straight, it really isn't straight. So I am going to just trim that off so that I have a nice straight line. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my rotary cutter, and I know there's many out there, this happens to be the one I use. This rotary cutter can be used if you're left-handed or right-handed. You'll notice there's a little ridge Every rotary cutter has that ridge, and this ridge is the resting point for your index finger. And it's just human kinetics, the where your pointing finger goes, or your index finger goes, your eyes go. It's just the way we're wired. Now I'm going to start by exposing my blade, 
and I'm going to palm my rotary cutter in my hand and I'm going to rest my driving finger or my index finger on that little rough area on the on the rotary cutter and what that does is it eliminates a lot of stress in my wrist it mitigates a lot of the stress that you'll find in the wrist area here especially those of you who suffer from carpal tunnel disease so I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to lay my fingers on my ruler and I'm going to start here see how my ruler overhangs I want to start my rotary cutter and I'm going to start cutting and I'm going to pause and I'm going to crawl my ruler my hand up the ruler and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep going right the way through to the end once I've done that I remove that small piece of fabric now one of the things I see people doing is they don't move their hand they leave it here and if I show you on the mat here and I leave my hand right there as I move my ruler my rotary cutter up the ruler can you see the ruler moving it moves off then I've seen people that do this and that kind of gives you a pivot point like this or I see this well what happens here is a lot of ladies out there have blouses with short sleeves because they get in the way so that's not the ideal way again I call it my spider fingers and I like to move my hand up the ruler. Once I have my square edge, I'm going to very, very carefully rotate my fabric. And I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to start by cutting some two and a half inch strips. So there's my two and a half inch mark. I'm simply going to lay it on the fabric. All right, one two and a half inches. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and again with my spider fingers I'm going to move it up. And I will continue to cut my fabrics in that fashion till I have the appropriate number of strips for my project that I'm going to work on. And that's my basic rotary cutting video and I'd like to invite you to join us for our next video on achieving a scant quarter inch. This is Jackie from Myra Stitch and Post. Hi everybody, I'm back here now over at my sewing machine and you might notice I'm sitting in front of the beautiful FAF performance icon. And I'd like to show you how you should set up your sewing machine for a scant quarter inch. Now the first thing that you have to remember is this is not always a perfect science but the first thing I want to do is show you that I recommend that everybody shorten your stitch length to a 2.0 from your default of 2.5 the next thing we want to do is we want to move our needle over to about 1.5 some of you depending on your fabric may need to go to a 1, uh, 0.8 now you will notice that up on the top here I have a neutral thread, light gray, or a fill 50 weight, which is what we recommend. Now in my previous video you saw me cutting two and a half inch strips, which I now have uh, sandwiched together and I'm going to simply sew these together with my new seam allowance. So I'm going to take my strips and no peekers, I've got them lined up perfectly don't have pins and I'm going to drop my foot and I'm going to make sure that the guide on my quarter inch piecing foot is along the edge of my fabric and I'm going to simply sew all the way. Now let me explain the reason the neutral thread because we want to save all of our money and buy lots of decorative threads for quilting. So for piecing, you need a neutral color thread. That shortened stitch length will ensure two things. One, your stitching doesn't show, and two, your seams won't have unravel. It's just a little trick. Once I get to the end, I'm going to use my built-in thread snips, cut my fabric, and I now have my scant quarter inch. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and press this seam and then we're going to take it to the table and we're going to measure it 
And my strip set, my two two and a half inch strips, when sewn together, should measure four and a half inches. So let's go to the ironing station and do a quick little press, and then we'll be back to measure and see exactly how well we did. Hi everyone, we're back here at the ironing station now, and I just wanted to show you that I have this nice green fabric that we stitched together for our test strip, and I used the light gray thread, and it's very, very difficult to see. And part of the reason for that is because it is a 50 weight and it's a shortened stitch length. If it were longer, you'd be able to see that. So now what I want to do is show you the correct pressing technique. And we are pressing, we're not ironing. Ironing is what grandma used to do with the old dry iron. I love to use steam, and I know there are people out there who don't like it, but I'm just touching the fabric with my iron and what that does is these fibers the thread fibers get embedded into my fabric fibers and now if I run my finger over there I can't feel anything prior to me pressing that seam I had a little ridge and now it's nice and flat and it's sort of seeding itself into the fibers of the fabric now the biggest mistake I see people doing is they press incorrectly so we set our seam like I just showed you, and then I'm going to take my fabric and my iron, and I'm going to just sweep my iron over the top, over the top, over the top, just like that. And by doing that, you eliminate pressing pleats into your seams, which I see all the time. All right, so now the moment of truth comes we're going to take this back out to the cutting station and we're going to get our ruler and if I've done everything correctly, so what I mean by that, I've cut a correct, accurate two and a half inch seam allowance. I use the proper setting for my scant quarter inch on my sewing machine and I pressed correctly. If I've done all of those things correct, this little strip set that I have here should measure four and a half inches. So let's go and test it out. Well, we're back at the cutting table, and I now have my uh, pieced two and a half inch strip set sewn together, pressed with my seams set to show you the underside. And uh, really, I pressed it towards the green fabric. It doesn't really matter whether it's towards the green or the dark. Most patterns will give you an indication of which way to press, so you would follow the instructions on the pattern. Now, the true test is whether or not this now measures four and a half inches. So I have my ruler and I'm going to put the ruler on the strip set and lo and behold, look at that. It's a perfect four and a half inches. Now I want to explain to you something. What you've just learnt with the moving of the needle is not going to be the same on every set of strips that you sew. And that is because fabric comes in different thicknesses. And I will give you a little tip that dark colored fabrics tend to be thicker than lighter colored fabrics. Consequently, if you have two very dark colored fabrics that you're sewing together in a strip set, you may not need to move your needle as far or you may need to move it over a little bit further. It's a test. And my suggestion is when you start piecing a quilt together that you do a little test sample like we've done here, cut some two and a half inch strips, move the needle to where you think your quarter inch setting should be, your scant quarter inch setting, and test it. Press it and measure it. And if it works out to four and a half inches, then you know that's the setting. All right? I'm Jackie from Meyer Stitch and Post, and I'd like to invite you to come back and visit, and I'm going to show you how to turn this small little strip set into a perfect four patch. Thanks. All right, we're back here, and now I'm going to take this little strip set that I've created, and I am going to show you the correct way to sew a perfect four patch. And there's a little secret that I want to show you, and that is the direction that your seam allowance is going on the back of your project. Now, if you all know, you all have feed dogs on your sewing machine. And when you feed this piece of fabric through your sewing machine with the seam pointing in the direction that you're sewing, 
what'll happen is the feed dogs will grab this little seam and it'll flip it backwards. And when it does that, it creates a gap. And so a lot of people go, what am I doing wrong? I've pinned it, but it's the nature in which you're sewing it together. So if at all possible, when sewing four patches together on your sewing machine, always make sure that the seam that's on the bottom is pointing towards you and that the seam on top is pointing in the direction that you're sewing. So you can see here that I've got my seam on the bottom paint pointing towards me and my seam on top is just nested into it and I'm not even gonna use pins. I'm gonna line those fabrics up and I'm gonna to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch that down and then I'm gonna show you how to spin these seams. All right, so here we are back at the sewing machine. My settings for piecing are the same as they were for when I was strip piecing. I've shortened my stitch length from 2.5 to 2, and my needle position, I've sent it to the right to a 0.8 setting. Now, I just want to say that depending on your machine, not all machines move in the same increments, so your machine may just be a little bit different. Okay, so I've dropped my foot, and I'm going to start to sew. Now, I'm going to show you that the seam on the bottom is pointing towards me and the seam on the top is pointing in the direction that I am sewing, which is this way. And what that does is it, one, it creates uh, a nest that the two seams will nest together in. Because that seam underneath is pointing towards me, it will not flip and cause a gap. I can control the direction of what I can see. I cannot control the direction of which I cannot see. Just line that up. Continue sewing till I get to the end. All right, so we're at the end. I'm going to thread snips. And I wanted to show you that underneath, my seam is going in the correct direction and it didn't flip. And on top, and when I open up my four patch, look at that. And that's because of the way we had the seams nested into one another. I never used any pins and the machine will naturally push those two seams together. Now the last thing that we wanna do before we press is to spin those seams. So I take my two ends and I pull them apart and twist them gives me a little mini four patch on the back and it just takes out all the bulk let me show you that one more time take my two seams pull it just breaks those few little stitches and there you can take that into your ironing room give it a gentle press and you have a perfect quarter inch um, perfect quarter inch seam and a perfect four patch this is Jackie from the Myra Stitch and Post, and I hope these videos have been helpful. Thanks.